Hey, this is Neighbor Argetsy. I'm bringing you some of the best comics that you might not know yet, but you're about to get to know them. Oh, thank you guys so much. It is uh, good to be doing stand-up in Nashville. I, uh, I come from a preacher family. Uh, my grandfather and my dad, both preachers, and I do this. Uh, <laughs> so close. Uh, <laughs> I think this is just a more fun version uh, of preaching. I don't have to baptize anybody. Um, that's gross. Uh, I am not trying to get in a hot tub with some sinner. Uh, if they're washing it off, I don't want it floating over to me. I am not trying to, trying to catch the reason they're here. Uh, But no, I do, think, I do admire them a lot. I think that stand-up is easier than preaching, for sure. Because as a comedian, you can kind of talk about whatever you want. Uh, my dad, every Sunday, has to just do a new book report uh, <laughs> about the same book every week for the rest of his life. And people send him mean emails about it <laughs> all the time. They'll be like, this Easter service sounds a lot like the one from a few years ago. It, he'll just be like, yeah, sorry, the material has not changed. You can't just add your own stuff. You know, the author is always listening. Uh, he has a violent history, so we got to be careful. Uh, but we had very sheltered childhoods as preacher's kids. Like, I was not allowed to watch a lot of the movies and TV shows my friends were watching. Like, I wasn't allowed to watch anything where the kids are disrespectful to their parents. So we did not watch any television at all. Uh, <laughs> The only shows we were allowed to watch were like the really old TV shows. Like my favorite show growing up was Bonanza. Any Bonanza fans in Nashville? You don't, yeah, I bet. Uh, you don't make a lot of friends in public high school just walking around like, hey, did you guys catch Bonanza yesterday? Is, they're all just like, I think we got vaccinated for that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I had Bonanza as a child, so. Why don't you take your rolling backpack and head on out of here? Uh, I had a rolling backpack for one day of public high school. That, that is as long as they let you have it. Uh, <laughs> but it's fun. The big thing, though, we were not allowed to watch anything in our house that had, like, an inappropriate scene in it. You know, so, uh, but sometimes there'd be a movie my dad still wanted us to be able to watch that would have like one bad scene in it. So for the parents here tonight, what's your, what's your move if you're watching something with your kids and a bad scene comes on? You cover their eyes. Yep, that's good. Just let them listen to it. Uh, <laughs> that's just good parenting. We got, <laughs> you're like, all right, buddy, you got to really use your imagination for this one, I guess. You got it. <laughs> You know, every year you get older, we're just going to crack our fingers a little bit more, and then eventually you'll be a man, and that'll be, that'll count as the talk. Uh, my dad did not do that. He, uh, he came up with his own solution. He would get the DVD of the movie. He would rip it into his computer. He would put it into editing software. He would cut out the bad scenes, edit the rest of the movie back together, and put it on my video iPod. It would take him four days uh, <laughs> per movie. But he loved me a lot. He did not want me to see that stuff. Uh, so much so, he was willing to commit a felony. <laughs> which that is. <laughs> but then I just, be, I was a kid, I got all these awesome movies on my iPod with these really weird cuts. And, and, and I'd just be watching like, oh, I bet that was a good one. Um, <laughs> But now as an adult, looking back, I can't help but think that somewhere on my dad's computer, uh, there's a folder. It has all the missing scenes from my movies in it. And that's what I do when I go home now. I try to find that folder uh, before the documentary crew does. So... Uh, I got run over by a car when I was a little boy. I don't have a good transition for this one. Uh, it's, 
It's a lot like when you get run over by a car as a little boy. <laughs> you just don't you don't see it coming. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's as good as I can do. Uh, <laughs> But uh, my babysitter ran over me with her car <laughs> when I was 10. Bad day at our house. Uh, not great. Um, not the worst babysitter we ever had, though. Uh, we, had, we had terrible babysitters growing up. My parents, I think they were just ladies from the church that would volunteer to babysit us for free. And I was like, Mom, I think that might be more of a red flag than a, <laughs> than a blessing. Uh, <laughs> There's one lady, um, she would make my brother and my sister and I lay on top of the bed with her and make us all look at our feet together. Um, she'd hear the car, car pull out of the driveway. She'd be like, all right, everybody, up on the bed, take off your shoes and socks. And she'd say, put your feet with my feet. And, I'd, and she'd be like, look at our feet. And she'd be like, are you looking at I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm looking at them. It, She'd say, one day we'll do this again, but your feet will be bigger than mine, and won't that just be a fun way for us to all monitor the passage of time in our lives together? <laughs> and I was eight years old, and even then I was just like, no! Uh, when I'm bigger than you, we are not gonna do weird stuff like this. This is so weird. I don't, I don't even know what weird means yet, but I know <laughs> my friends that I don't have would do that, would not do this with their babysitters. I, I'm pretty sure when I tell my mom and dad about this, we're never gonna see you again. And <laughs> if I exaggerate just a little bit, you're gonna go to jail. <laughs> and you can compare your feet with whoever you want there. I think, <laughs> I think they do that. But. But the one who ran over me was pretty bad. Uh, she, what happened was I was 10, my brother, my, my little brother and I were playing in the front yard. We were playing with guns in the front yard, playing cowboy guns. And I remember my parents had come home, so it was time for Catherine, our babysitter, to leave. So she was backing down our driveway. And I realized from across the yard that I left my toy gun laying in the driveway and she was headed for it. So I ran across the yard, I laid down, I reached out, I grabbed my gun like the good cowboy that I was. And Catherine rolled over my arm um, with her back right tire, um, everybody started screaming. You know, my dad came outside. He was like, what happened? Um, our other babysitter's hiding in the bushes. Like, at least it wasn't his feet. <laughs> um, she, <laughs> the precious feet. <laughs> she would have dove in front of the car if it had been headed for my feet. Um, <laughs> so my dad's like, what happened? I'm like, Catherine ran over me with her car. And my brother's like, Catherine, try to kill Andrew again. And we'd had some history. And I, I was like, Dad, take me to the emergency room. And he said, well, um, let me see it. And I said, no, it was with a real car. I want a real doctor. And, and he said, well, you were wearing a sweatshirt. Uh, so should be good. And I was like, Dad, I don't think that's how Under Armour works. I think, I think it behaves a lot like other fabrics when it's run over by vehicles. I had to convince them to take me to the emergency room. I thought that Catherine was going to have to drive me. Uh, did not feel appropriate. But they finally took me. I got an x-ray. It turns out my arm was not broken. Um, it just got mushed a little bit. I guess the sweatshirt did its job. He's right about everything. Uh, so next Sunday night, guess who was back to babysit at our house? You got to break a bone to get fired from our family. But she became my favorite babysitter because after that, I could do whatever I want. If you run over a kid, they call the shots. From then on, she'd be like, Andrew, it's time to go to bed. And I'd be like, okay, Catherine, can I read you a poem that I wrote first? I wrote you a poem today. It's uh, roses are red, violets are blue, just like my arm was after you ran over it with your Civic. Uh, yeah, turn on Bonanza and get me a beer. And she didn't last very long after that. But you guys are great. Thank you so much. My name is Andrew Stanley. Thanks for coming.